All right, I'm here today with Brad and Haley, and they're the owners of a beautiful Perican Zone RV. And one of the things I wanted to do today was basically just walk around for you guys. You've been in your van for a month now. So just get some feedback, features that you like, things that have changed. Yeah. Let's have a walk around and we can have a look at those things, eh? Sounds good. You're about to head off on your trip around Australia, continue your travels. So, what? How many years has that been that you guys been on the road? Uh, about a year and a half. Now. Year and a half. So, yeah, so exciting. And you've obviously already come out of a really good Australian-made caravan into another Australian-made. So, well done on that. Yeah. And I really look forward to following those adventures. And today is all about just getting your perspective of some of the things that we think is really cool, but it'd be yeah. really great to hear from you and for our audience, obviously, of what you've experienced so far. Yeah, there's a lot of changes um, for us and there's a lot of things that we're loving. So yeah, let's uh, go for a walk around and point you through some of those things. Cool, let's do it. So one of the things that we really wanted you guys to give us feedback was like, this thing's all set up a little bit different to your last one. Obviously, you got heaps more front box and things like that. One of the reasons most people get into a zone is weight related. Obviously, yeah, we build a premium van, but we've worked really hard. We're really well known for lightweight, strength, and dust free. Yeah. What's your feedback, Brad? Yeah, well, obviously, light, being lightweight is a big consideration for us because we don't want to sort of go to the bigger American truck. We like having our small yeah. cruiser. We like being able to fit down tracks and stuff like that that the um, bigger trucks can't. Yeah, so the front box, uh, we love the front box. It's a lot bigger and the accessibility is way better. So having this massive door and all your gear, like all our dirty gear sort of is in here, like yeah. our chairs and our stuff that we don't mind, they can get wet, we can throw them in there and dry them out later, yeah. you know, when you're moving camp. And also having these front pockets to have uh, the diesel tanks and also have room that we can put extra dirty gear, like we've yeah. been storing our muck mat and our wheel chocks and yep. things like that. The stuff that we don't want, really want to get on the carpet, um, we throw that stuff in there. So there's uh, so much space, like you can load this thing up with, you know, a lot of weight. One of the really big things we made in Gen 2 was everybody's got a lot of all weight issues obviously rear axle weight so yeah we purposely make them lighter on the front but yeah. they're built to load so yeah i know you've had yours and you've weighed it and you're okay with all that stuff but like you've got a really nice neat setup in there i know you've got your pump in there you've got your water here your air outlet everything's sort of accessible and what we saw out there in the market was a lot of people putting wanting to put a lot more stuff here mm -hmm. In some ways, it's the worst place you can put too much weight. So we've tried to design it big enough. Yeah, you can put plenty in there, mm -hmm. but we've balanced the rest of the van so that's possible. So no, mate. Yeah. Um, I like the way you've packed it too. Very neat and tidy. Yeah. So well done. <laughs> I don't know if it's you or Haley, but well done. You've got some nice gear in there. So yeah, it's awesome. looks really well set up, mate. But one of the key things we did too was to get rid of the stone guard. Yep. So we've incorporated that. So this is a fully composite box, but at the front, it's encased with Ali. It's got the plates with the tough coating. I like that you've got this um, sort of adjustability so you can take this off, get it re-coated. Yeah, if you ever have to, you can yeah. get it re-sprayed yeah. or whatever. So, no, it's good to have those options as well. So yeah, I have a really important part of the front of any van, I think, is this part, which is actually our barbecue slide. So obviously everyone, I think most people love having that feature. So you've got your Weber there, you can take it off in case of any sorts of fires or anything. Yeah, let me know what's your experience because obviously we got the outdoor kitchen now and yeah. this, so it's sort of a double feature, but yeah, how's yeah. that been for you guys? Well, I know we've only been in the van for a month, but we've um, done probably 80% of our cooking outside just yep. because we have the facilities now to do that. Yep. We come from a van that had a very small outdoor table and that's good, but it was just big enough to put the Weber on. Yeah, and, um, and that's traditional across most vans. You know, yeah. We were the same. You know, to be it was honest. always a bit cumbersome. You know, we'd had the Weber in our front toolbox to pull that out. Yeah. You know, you're sort of leaning over things. So to have the Weber on this slide, um, it's adjustable. I can take those, take these out of this anchor track and put it on the table and run a long yeah. lead to, to my gas point here. Well, it's wide um, enough too. You can turn it the other way if you need to. Obviously, yeah. you could have it if you put your pole out and you've got, we've got our awning out a little bit today. But yeah, yeah. but it's a proper composite and stainless so it's a really nice feature in the vans yeah. you don't have to have that but it does add quite a bit extra yeah accessibility and storage having that front composite box it's um good because a lot of our gear can be in there whereas in our last van a lot of our gear was in the tunnel yeah so to remove that 
yep. and, and be able to have this facility here, it's yeah, it's really good for us. The other cool thing in this one as well, like is this the little pole carrier. So they're really nice and you can just put, you've got all your little yeah. nooks and crannies there filled up already. Yeah, there's always like long poles, like we've got a Starlink pole, we've got our, our um, for our stabilizer legs, our winding pole yeah. for that. Like yep. even a, a broom, like a broom for washing a van, like can that was always a, a bit of a thing that you'd have to juggle around. So that's all out there out of the way, which is really nice. And all zones come with quite a lot of windows and a lot of airflow. So the big window on the far side, people often ask me, why do we have that? Not two little ones. Because we have a 270 liter fridge freezer it actually won't come out through this door, it comes out of that window. So we get asked all the time, could we just have the smaller windows on the far side and two of them? It's better for security and things like that. I'm not disagreeing with that. <laughs> One of the big problems is you definitely don't wanna to have to cut this out or cut your fridge in half to get it out. So we do try and think of those things being the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a customer, you may not fully understand that. But mm. the other big difference too in a zone <coughs> is we build them actually like a boat. So that's our heritage, that's where we've come from. Dave and the team originally came from a really boat building background. And because composites are us, we build them. So when you would have noticed when you've got yours and you actually have the glass door, it's quite hard to shut, isn't it? It's like yeah, pretty it well sealed. You can feel the suction when you pull it open. There's like a bit of a vacuum inside, which it did help like to throw a little bit of silicon spray along that edge. It yeah, makes it come open just makes it easier. easier. Yeah, but um, no, you can definitely tell there's a there's a seal and our old van, um, she was pretty good with the dust, but yeah. It, yeah, we had to take certain precautions to not let dust in. Having a three-way fridge, we'd have like dust ingress from the vents so we'd always have to cover off cover our vents off. Yeah. now every time we go on traveling on a few dirt roads and well we've traveled on a few dirt roads so far in the zone it's just been nice to leave camp in the morning close the door and you don't have to worry about a thing don't do anything yeah, yeah. as long as you close that your hatches you're safe to yeah. pretty much have that dust free experience and yeah. that's something we've worked really hard with and that's one of the major reasons we went completely gas free inside mm -hmm. It's really hard to do both, yep. and I hats off to anyone who does both, but um, for us, we just went completely gasless inside. Yeah. Give that gas option outside, but no, yeah. mate. And you went manual steps, which is fine. You're yeah. still young, fit, fancy free, so. <laughs> no, um, just really good, and having the crimp safe sort of screen on there, like you can, we travel in a lot of hot climates, having that screen there, it's like security. You can have your door open at night. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anyone trying to creep in. All right, so one of our most favorite parts of any video that we do at Zone is obviously outdoor kitchen, so. Yeah, we're loving the outdoor kitchen. <laughs> we sort of sometimes get, people often go, is it really actually an outdoor kitchen or is it just a bench, what is it? Well, what is, what's your thoughts? There's probably no be, point it, us saying it anymore. Yeah, it can be it can be whatever you want it to be. With us, we make YouTube videos, so we're always looking for places to charge cameras and things like that, and to be outside, yep. you know, and you've really hit the nail on the head for an outdoor kitchen. So we can plug our mobile induction unit here, cook meals, which we've already done a, a lot of, yep. wash up outside, all that mess that stays from the inside. Yep. And like, I like how you've, given us a lot of space where we can throw different odds and ends, cuts, cups, cutlery. So basically everything we have inside the van, we've duplicated it to be outside the van. So we don't have to sort of be in and out. We yeah. either go, we're cooking inside or we're cooking outside. Um, yeah, but you've so done it smart too. Like, like we yeah. suggest that with people. Obviously we don't want people carting way more stuff than they need to, but you've got some pretty lightweight cups. You've got yeah. knives and forks out here. Really the way that you've thought it out, you can tell it's been thought out by campers rather than manufacturers because yeah. the way that it, it works is just like feels so natural when you pull the table down. Because it actually was quite a bit to change and we wanted to shift some weights and that anyway but it, it changed our internal kitchens as you can understand because yep. we've taken some of that space. Originally we were going to have a little pull out um, fridge and mm. we had shelves going inside but then we start to lose our ability to basically keep it dust free yeah. and the thing with this you can hose all this down it's completely external yep. nothing's going internal so yeah obviously be careful around your electrical stuff but yeah it's really cool like that and I, I really I'm excited to see you guys travel and use it a lot more but mm. I think you'll find that's a pretty key part of it and you've got your awning out just enough to keep us out of it yep I always say to people if you get an automatic one you'll do this heaps yeah if you don't you tend to it's yeah. you know it's not hard but yeah no I love it and I think that that space that's usually accessed by the from the inside of the, yeah. that's dead space you've got to sort of reach a long right way to in get there. in there isn't it whereas i'd much rather have this outside and be able yeah. to utilize this space here like one yeah. of the big things too i was going to talk to you about like obviously ours is a front door you came from a rear door and a very short van well this yep. is only a 19 foot that's as small as we go yeah 
Um, it's still short enough and still have the bolster bed. Yeah. Um, having the front door, we found, we we originally opted for the rear door, that was a, a criteria of ours, yep. is um, because we wanted to have that sort of privacy in the in the caravan. Yeah. But the more that we traveled, the more that we realized that, that you're just sacrificing space around your bed yes. and movability, you know, you, yeah. you're sacrificing that for something that's not really an issue, just put your blinds up. So, yeah. yeah and, and to do all this in 19 foot, there's obviously it's compromises, cool. yeah. you know. So, but I think it's the best of both. And towing wise, how, I know you've got my car here today because yeah. yours is getting service. But yeah, for yourselves towing so far, I know you haven't done, but you've have done a fair few trips with me already. Like, yeah. how's that experience been? Yeah, so we've gone from the Cruise Master XT suspension to the Cruise Master ATX airbag suspension, and uh, it's really it, it is night and day. So um, I'd never towed with airbags before, and. Just um, the feel of the van it is way softer than the XT suspension, a lot quieter as well. Yeah. But um, it definitely the airbags take out a lot of buck and bounce that we would have otherwise Transferring had. Transferring through. Yeah, so no, we're, we're really um, impressed. And obviously being the top of line Cruise Master um, component that you guys put on all your vans, it's, um, yeah. it's obviously important to you guys that that's throughout your whole range and for a reason. Yeah, that, we just, um, in the end, just made that standard. Like people that would go for XT, that's fine. That's a, we're still a good product and everything. Mm -hmm. But we're finding most of our people are going from that three and a half to four ton range. So yep. you really want that with uh, ATX, there's just no comebacks with that. It's just a great system. The guys are everywhere across the country as we've talked about before. So yeah. no, nah, that's awesome, mate. Yeah. Well, we can move around to the back, I suppose. Yep. You've got the protection pack on all yours, so all your bump, they're, they're all yeah. galvanized anyway, but they've got the extra protection Just pack. ties it all together. I really like the way that you guys do that protection pack. It just makes it look a little bit yeah. nicer. A little no, bit that's for sure. We've optioned for one spare tire. I think yeah. in all our travels, we've only ever really needed one spare tire. We've also got the ladder on the back, which is good because I used to have a, a retractable um, ladder that I'd carry around everywhere to clean my solar panels. Now it's attached to the, to the van. It's a lot lighter weight than the retractable yeah. ladder. And I could just jump up there and clean my panels whenever whenever I need to, or be able to service anything up there. And, um, and yeah, we've also thrown on a Starlink pole just to get that out of the road and um, yeah that's a really nice thing he's done there like it looks cool yeah it's just sort of out of the way for us now it looks really clean and yeah um, yeah it's been working really well that's for us one of so the far. carbon fiber fully adjustable ones so that yeah. looks really nice obviously because of what you do yeah that would work nice you got a good rear light yep. you've got your two cameras i'm not sure if you had two before but no nah, we didn't and these are actually a higher definition than yeah. our last one so you get a lot clearer picture and it's nice to have um patsy be able to direct me on the site through the microphone yeah a lot of people don't realize that's on there and often when you're back in the sites other people are giving you <laughs> lots of wisdom so you'll be able to hear them inside now so good luck with yeah. that no, it's good. Um, all ours come with the same rear dirty bag, so yeah. that's pretty cool too. I know you're not putting rubbish in there, but you just carry a bit of stuff in there. Oh, the Stullage hoses and, and the Starlink cables that are associated with the um, with that dish, and yeah, and also the uh, bike carrier. So we're going back over to WA, and we haven't really found the need to run bikes over WA, but when we come more east coast, um, we'll yeah. definitely be getting back into the bike. Yeah, and, it handles all that. Now we've got that. There. One of the things you'll notice if you're a sort of long time zone follower. There's no more gas um, mm. on the back here. There's nowhere at all that we have any of that. So it's really cleaned up our lines. Like, yeah. So everything's clean there at the back. You don't have to do anything. You're one of the first of the 24s with completely gas free inside so yeah having the two diesel tanks and the diesel hot water i'm sure it's that's been, been pretty transformational from what you come from it's been a miracle i'll let patsy talk more about that <laughs> she loves the diesel hot water as do i but yeah we'll show you that when we um, and we can tell slide. by you know i've seen she's obviously washing her hair a lot more it's glowing she's a lot more. cleaner yeah yeah so, so well done <laughs> electrical box on yours that's a game changer in there. And actually Red Arc themselves build our total board now for us direct. Mm. Gets shipped from South Australia to our factory, straight in, really nice. Yeah, um, no, we, we love the Red Arc gear. We've um, run Red Arc gear in all previous four wheel drives of ours and um, even contacted their service and support uh, a few times to get things so sorted out or with any issues we might have. And they've been awesome to have them um, on board with you guys and supplying your electrical stuff's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, I take my hat off to Red Arc. We've been down there quite a few times. We've built a really nice relationship. Mm. They're a really strong 
they uh, company their their reinvestment into that company is amazing, and I think there's 350 staff there across South Australia and Melbourne. Yeah. they've got places in the US now. Anthony and the team down there have done an exceptional job and we should all be very proud as Australians that they represent us and they're taking that product to the world. Yeah. Cannot say enough about how good Red Arc are. You've got Red Arc solar panels, yeah. we use their batteries. It's a complete Red Arc system. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing. We've uh, gone from having 200 <laughs> amp hour of power and uh, like 500 watts of solar to having 600 amp hour is what we've opted for with the batteries. So yep. triple what we had before and double on the roof. So we've got yeah. nearly 1100 watts of solar. And to be really fair, like you came out of a like a 2016 model yep. and you're into a 2023, 24. Yeah. So the, that's the big difference. The technology you know? in eight years. Yeah, is, um, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. Even your fridge freezer, like you came out of having, you know, gas fridge and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how yep. we were. Yeah. But it's transformational, the change, isn't it? Yeah, with the lithium batteries and the solar panels, uh, I just don't think there's no, any going back from uh, the no. uh, compressor style fridges. Yeah, but again, you traveled, you did lots of cool stuff. You've seen amazing places. I keep saying it to everyone, really don't care. Get out there, enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but when you want this sort of experience, it's a premium experience and yeah. it's really cool. But. No, mate, thanks yeah. for showing us around the outside. Yeah. We might get with Patsy and do the uh, inside look, eh? Sounds good. Righto, so we're in your house. So well done. Very I nice, know. very clean. It's a very nice home, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, you know, you've made a transition in a couple of pretty big things. So one is like you've gone from a normal toilet to a composting toilet. Yes. Can you give us a little insight? A lot of people are worried yeah. about that. I know you guys were. We were a little bit worried because I think it's just something different. The people that complain about a composting toilet probably have never actually had one themselves. And now that we've experienced it for a month now, we literally could not go back to the cassette. No. So we've been using it for four weeks and we've only had to empty the wheeze. So that's good that the other compartment can last at least yeah. a month. Um, and you don't get that smell, hey? Like no. such a difference. No. no, we've had zero smell. You're not looking for dump points? <laughs> no. That's a big change. That actually takes a while to get used to because you're I so know. used to on wiki camps going, where's the next dump point? Where's water? Yeah. That all goes. Especially when we're out in remote places and that and that was Brad's job. So I'm sure he'll be happy that he doesn't have to yeah, look for the dump for points that. anymore. But yeah, no, it makes the whole toilet thing a much more pleasant experience. And just so far, like usability and stuff, pretty simple to use. Like, you know, you just get the little pee. Yeah. Can you explain like that hasn't been as hard? Like I just see people no. all the time online. Like we've actually been using composting toilets for over two years now. Yeah. We don't supply anything, but a lot of people thought we were crazy, but just for you guys, so pretty simple to, to use now? Like what's yeah, the sort absolutely. of- Yeah, absolutely. So we were just told to, um, when you put the peat in, add your amount of water yep. until it looks like kind of like wet soil. Yep. Um, so we did that and once we got that consistency right, it's been good ever since. You just kind of monitor it, you yeah. know, as you're using it. It's good too, like you probably haven't noticed it enough yet, but it just absolutely saves you quite a lot of water. So yes, generally you, you don't realize how much water you actually use With every time you flush. But yeah. Now you don't have any of that. And it's mainly the smell. We didn't matter where we went, especially when it got hot and it got over 30 degrees and you get to yep. those places where like we did a lot of West End and Inner um, Australia, like mm. it just would absolutely turn me off. Yep, um, and we definitely. were finding we were dumping all the time. So. And especially if you're traveling with people with our old cassette, if it was hot, you know, you'd be worried about, oh, if we open the van, are you going to get that smell? Yeah. yeah we don't so it's have changed it a lot, anymore. hasn't it? Yeah. What's some of the other things? Like you guys have gone from gas hot water to a complete diesel hot oh, water system. That has been my favorite thing in this caravan. So the diesel hot water has absolutely been life changing. Obviously, we do a lot of off grid camping where we are conserving water. Yep. But when you do go to a caravan park and you're hooked into water and you want to have a good proper shower, like you don't want to, we used to, with our old hot water, we would only be able to have a four-ish minute, you know, shower, shower yeah. before the hot water ran out. Yeah. Whereas now, the once it's hot, it stays hot for as long as you want it to be hot. Uh, and when you need to do the washing up and that as well, we don't need to try and time both of our showers and the washing up and all that. Yeah. It's just press of the button, within about two minutes it's hot and it stays hot for as long as we want it to be, so. And efficiency's been, been pretty good. I know I've talked to Brad a little bit about yeah. that, but I know you guys did a week roughly, maybe a litre of 
um, diesel usage. Was that about right? Like, yeah, it's a couple of litres a week, which is yeah. really affordable, right. really easy to maintain. Yeah. Just so everyone realises, it's 100% diesel hot water. You can't run that on 240. And we did that to okay. try and help look after everyone's battery power. So yeah. it's 100% diesel hot water and you can always get diesel in places whereas gas sometimes it's a bit harder a bit more expensive yeah we found anyway and so. not as easy to carry whereas yeah. diesel is very simple to carry safe to carry so yeah i think that's a really nice change and it's great to hear your yeah, feedback that's been my favorite part so in the back there obviously your diesel hot water systems in there and above yes. it is your shelf you're not having overheating issues it's not getting too hot there's not no. all that stuff so no like you guys told us that that top cupboard would get a bit warmer uh, but it's nothing crazy we just store out we use that as a dirty clothes area yeah uh, and that's been fine even when we've we try and turn the diesel hot water off once we're finished using hot water, so we're not just running it for no reason, but sometimes when we do accidentally leave it on, yeah. uh, it doesn't get any hotter no. or anything, it's fine. No, and all our testing, we let that go for weeks yeah. and it was fine. Yeah. Um, Shower-wise and just that whole ensuite area, how's that compared to where you came from in the <laughs> similar size van? It's a nice big shower, yep. plenty of room in there. But uh, having the bigger ensuite has been really good, especially just like little things like if you want to go in there and get changed and whatever, yeah. we have a lot more room in there now to do that. Yeah. So that's been pretty cool. Like we can even both fit in there, brush our teeth and whatever. Uh, we were used to kind of only being able to have one person in the ensuite. So it's pretty cool that we have the smallest van, a 19 footer, but we still have so much space in the ensuite. Yeah. So that was yeah. one of the areas in the 19 footer, especially. We used to do an 18 six and we really wanted to give the bathroom a little bit more yeah. room i had an 18 6 myself and it was one of the things i felt like we were compromised a little bit just just yeah. a little bit too shy of space now it's a good size and now as well uh, we have a lot more storage in the bathroom yep. so we were finding that we were having to store a lot of our bathroom stuff under the bed in our yeah, old right. van yep. whereas now we can move that weight to yeah. the back where it should be in the bathroom because uh, we have that space now so and that's, that's progression as things change and evolve yeah. Um, they got a good size bowl in there. You happy with that? Yes, I can wash my face yeah, <laughs> Yes, I know in the comments that was one of the things you were looking for. <laughs> no, that's been good. So our old van had pretty much the same uh, layout apart from obviously the lounge area. We had the cafe style seating. Yeah. Uh, whereas in this one we have the L shape which has created so much more room I think yeah. down this hallway. Yep. And even for us uh, working and spending a lot of time on the laptops this area now is a lot more usable for us yeah. because it has a lot more space we can fit here more comfortably and it feels a lot more open yeah my advice is and i think we'll change that on the configurator that virtually l shape should be the only configuration you really should get in this van yeah we came from the same van but with a cafe lounge it was terrible like you yeah. struggled to get past just here this just opens much. it up a lot more in a 21 foot it's fine it works yeah. really well you get a nice big table yeah but in a 19 footer i think that is the only way mm. i think these should work because it's just such a this, this is really open you can obviously move your table over even more if you want more room down the center but yeah with a front door it's just straight in and yeah i think that works really nice but yeah so because the layout was similar when we moved into this one i kind of just started packing things where i had them in the last van yeah uh but then i realized that i had a lot more cupboard space even though it's a similar size and a similar layout so a big part of that is not having the oven we now have a whole extra large pot and pan drawer there because we don't have the oven so one of the big things that we try to do obviously everyone's using air fryers bigger mm. things a lot of the ladies carry Fermo mixes, all sorts of stuff. So yeah. all of our vans have a minimum of those three big pot drawers and that gives you all those options. But yeah, yeah no, sure. I think you've got yours really well appointed. I see you got lots of twisties and <laughs> nice things in there. Um, good to see Brad's on the health food. Plenty of food storage. And I like how these ones have the built-in shelves. Yeah. Because we came from a van where we had to buy a lot of shelf in inserts okay, yeah, and right tubs and yep. that sort of thing. Whereas these cupboards all have shelves built into them, which makes it easier to- Yeah, so in all our Peregrines and that and the family vans, this yep. side here has the half shelves yeah. is what you're talking about. This side's fully open. Yeah. 21 footers, you actually get a pull out pantry as well. 
and they're just a little compromises between the two models yeah um, but you stand up with the same i'm sure you're enjoying a fridge freezer that's 270 oh, liters we love that and even just having the compressor fridge and not having to rely on gas anymore yeah for our fridge we've noticed it stays a lot colder we can fit so much more stuff in it as well yeah. the freezer in particular is a lot bigger than what we were used to so yeah, yeah it's one of the still... things we really looked at yeah. when we did this model we use all Webasto stuff, if you would have noticed. You've got Webasto yeah. diesel heater, hot water system and air conditioner. Yeah. So they're really yeah. nice. Vents and things and cross flows. Um, as I talked about earlier, that big window there, so you yeah. can actually get your fridge out if there's ever an issue. Yeah. In a 21 footer, you get two of those, but. Definitely, we can create lots of airflow because there's so many windows and the windows are really large. Yeah, so. and we've tried to do that best, give you as much air. I think that's the other thing I noticed, like in these, it's just that really nice, it does actually give mm. you a, a bigger feeling inside, doesn't it? I'm sure yeah. you're noticing that difference of come into a zone they do feel quite open yeah i like how you've gone the wide up top that also not an illusion but helps make it that look a bit more open look very open and airy yeah yeah so now i really like your colors obviously you got heaps of under bed storage mm -hmm. um i won't get you to open that because i know brad's got all his <laughs> gear under there and his dumbbells and stuff to keep himself fit trim and healthy so yeah, so one of the last things, let's have a look at obviously all your red arc switching. You can do that on yes. your phone, obviously with your app. That's been pretty cool. And coming from a 2016 van, it doesn't seem that old, but really in the last eight years or seven years, a lot has changed Huge when it comes amount. to technology. Yep. So we were used to, you know, having to plug cords in and uh, do all those sorts of things. Whereas now when we want to put the inverter on, we can just click it here or we can use the app on our phone. Uh, even if we turn up to a campsite, we can just get the app on our phone, turn the lights on. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, if Brad's gone to bed early and I'm still doing stuff and I leave a fan on or something, rather than having to get out of bed and fix it, he can just turn it off on the phone. Yeah, um, it, and, that's yeah. a big difference and big that's, cool all brands and things are real, the technology's moving all the time. So yeah. it is really nice. As I said earlier, Red Arc's really good to work with that. But yeah, no. and to see everything in one place, like we can see the levels of our water tanks there, the level of our gray water, all our battery percentages, what's coming in with solar, that yeah. sort of thing. It's all, it's all in the one accessible. spot. And that's yeah. what I've tried to do. It's all pretty clean and easy. I, yeah. I would say that's one of the big things with Assign. We don't have a it, it, things sort of everywhere it's all sort yeah. of done we use vans yeah. ourselves so you've got your level three airbag i mean you've got used to that now being able to adjust the van yourself yes. not carrying all that extra planks oh, of whatever that and, has been incredible like often when we are driving along on a travel day you stop on the side of the road for some lunch we would normally have lunch on a bit of a lean because you're on the side of the road yeah. whereas now we can just Level use up. the airbags we're nice and level we can even chuck the aircon on if we want yeah. to we haven't ever had that experience of running an aircon off grid yeah our shakedown trip <laughs> hey like you yeah. guys pulled over made lunch had all that aircon yeah. running we quite level, hot out we west cool. yeah um, so that was awesome and then yeah you can just go back outside level it back to its traveling height and away you go so that's been pretty good Hey guys, so thanks very much for opening your doors, letting us in. It's been really good to have a look in your perspective and that's really appreciative from our side, like just getting honest feedback. I know you work with us as well, so some people will think then that's not honest feedback, but for us it truly is and it's been great to have you guys come on board and yeah. as I said, loved your travels and all what you've done so far and um, moving forward, I look forward to seeing where you take this thing and mm, put it you. through its uh, paces, but yeah, so thanks heaps. Yeah, thanks Tofty for coming for a walk around and hopefully you guys got some insight into what it's like owning a Zone Perrigan. No worries. All right. Have a great day. Well